It's a joy and honor for me to be here with you today and share God's word with you. Uh, my brother said, I've got fire in my belly. It is true. I had some very spicy chicken last night. <laughs> my belly is on fire. So I don't know what fire I'm going to preach today, but Holy Spirit fire, hopefully. I'm excited to share a Christmas message with you today. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 18. Uh, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? Come on, can I hear a good amen? Well, I'm excited to be here with my wife, Pastor Kay, and uh, we're so glad to come and share. And I want to speak to you on the title, This Is Not What I Had Envisioned. Or another way we could say it is, uh, This Is Not What I Had Expected. A few years ago, before the pandemic hit, I took my daughter, Deborah, to Black Thunder. And it's a water theme park, if you don't know Black Thunder. And on the corner of that section is a scary house. And my daughter was with me and she looked at me and said, Daddy, take me to the scary house. And she was about five years old at this point. And I looked at her and I said, Baby, I appreciate your boldness. I applaud your courage, but I don't think you're ready for the scary house. She looked at me and said, No, Daddy. Take me to the scary house. And I took her, I bought tickets because I'm a good, good father, right? So I took her into the scary house, and within a few moments, she was terrified. She said to me, Daddy, take me back, take me outside. I said to her, no, baby, that's not how the scary house works. We've got to go all the way through, and we're going to come out. And when we came out, she looked at me and she said, Daddy, this is not what I expected. <laughs> this is not what I had thought. And sometimes that's how it is. Because we have in life a picture of how we expect things to go. But how many of you know life doesn't go the way we expect it to happen? How many of you can say this year, 2021, did not go the way I thought it would go lift your hands? All right, few people telling the truth this morning. All right, so we have a picture how life is supposed to go. Some of us have a picture how marriage is supposed to be. We think marriage is supposed to be one big honeymoon. Come on. You think when you get married, oh, you're going to look into her eyes. And she's going to look into your eyes. Love is going to be in the air. And you're going to look at, some people look at their wife and say, wow, you're beautiful like Kashmir. She looks at him and says, you're like Shimla. Woo. Then a few months later, years later, they look at each other. You're like Pakistan. You're like Wuhan. You're like coronavirus. You don't go away. You keep mutating. Parenting is not what I envisioned. When God gave me a daughter, I was so glad. I was happy because I thought she would sit on my lap and she'd be gentle, she'd be kind, she'd be calm. But you know what God gave me? A tsunami. <laughs> she comes, ah! Sometimes I'm like, come out in the name of Jesus. No, I don't say that. <laughs> She's God's best gift to me, by the way. But parenting sometimes is not what we envisioned. And if we're really honest, and if we can get a little deep, I'd say sometimes our faith in God is not how we envisioned it to be. We think just because we come to church, just because we pray, God's going to provide because he's my provider. But we forget that God leads us sometimes by what he provides and other times by what he withholds. Sometimes you're praying for increase and you see decrease. You're praying for breakthrough, but it feels like you're breaking down. If you feel like your life is not going to have you envision, I feel you're in the right place. Because Matthew says like this, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. 
And I think if you asked Mary, Mary, is this what you envisioned? She would say, no way. I was getting ready for a bridal shower, <laughs> but now I have to get ready for a baby shower. I had picked out my wedding gown. Ooh, it looked good, but I can't fit it anymore because I'm pregnant. It's not what I envisioned. You know, the Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah. But I think they missed the birth of the Messiah because Jesus didn't come how they envisioned he would come. Because from heaven's perspective, the birth of Jesus was spectacular. Come on, somebody. Angels were singing. It was glorious. Star of wonder was leading. It was wondrous. But from earth's perspective, it was ordinary. It was mundane. Jesus had no royal clothes on. He had no Gucci shoes. He had no branded clothes. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. But from heaven's perspective, hmm, I want to tell you, those days, the shepherds, before they took the sacrificial lamb, you know what they would do? The night before, they would wrap it in swaddling clothes. And when heaven saw Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, it knew that the darling of heaven had become earth's perfect sacrificial lamb for you and me. I thought you'd say a louder amen. Come on, can I hear a good amen? From earth's perspective, Herod thought that Jesus had come to steal his throne. But he didn't realize Jesus came to make you and me his very throne. Come on, can I hear an amen? Come on, if you really believe it, say a good amen. amen. See, many times we miss what God is trying to do because we're always trying to see with our natural eyes. And we miss what God is doing in the spirit and I believe there are people here today, even like Joseph, who might have some situations in their life that are confusing right now. But I hope and I pray that before I finish this message, you will discover that it's not what it looks like. God's not done with you yet. He is working something inside of you far more glorious. Matthew starts the book with the genealogy because he's writing from a human perspective. He, he wants you to know how Jesus came. John starts with a different perspective. He starts the book by saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But, you know, because John wants you to know that Jesus existed before he came to this earth. Jesus didn't start his life on earth. My daughter, when she was small, she looked at me. She said, so daddy, is Jesus about 2,000 years old? I said, no baby. <laughs> he existed long before. He's the ageless one. He's the ancient one. He has no beginning nor end. But Matthew, he wants you to know how Jesus came to earth so we will know why Jesus came. So we're going to read Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18 again, uh, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now I want you to listen to this phrase, he had in mind. Okay. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. And I feel many times the decisions we make in our lives bring us confusion because we have in our mind rather than going to God and seeing what he has in store for us. Verse 20, but after he had considered this. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And I have to stop here and ask a question. Why did the angel come now? 
I mean, why did he appear to Joseph after Mary was pregnant, right? After Joseph had gone through months without knowing, and now that he has made up his mind, the angel says, oh, by the way, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. If I was Joseph, that's the question I'd be asking God, why now? Why couldn't you tell me this before? Have you ever wondered why God waits till you make a plan and then interrupts that plan? Feels like sometimes, God, are you good at planning? Because the Christmas story seems like a poor case study in planning. But I want to tell you, God is a master planner. Because Joseph is in his disappointment. And in his disappointment, he didn't know that through his disappointment, God was getting ready to bring the greatest hope that this world has ever seen. I wonder if that's happening to somebody right now because you're sitting in your disappointment. And you're crushed in your disappointment. But what if through your disappointment, God was creating the greatest hope for you and through you in your life? What if your disappointment was going to turn into God's appointments? What if through your disappointment, God's getting ready to make his greatest deliverance? So the Bible says this is how the birth of Jesus came about. After Joseph had made up his mind how he needed to handle the situation, God interrupts his plan to fulfill a greater purpose. Joseph made up his mind. Emotionally, mentally, he decided, I'm done with this. I feel that's how sometimes we come to church. Maybe that's how you came to church today. You made up your mind. You decided to give up. You decided to quit. Maybe some of you want to give up on your marriage. Maybe give up on your job. Maybe some of you went through such bad situations. You want to give up on joy. You want to give up on peace. But I came to preach to somebody today and tell you what you think is the end with you is only the beginning when God gets involved in your life come on if you're going to cop give a good hand clap to the Lord see there are two ways to live by by faith or by sight and if we live by sight we're like Joseph and he thought about it he thought about what to do with the situation you got to understand Joseph is a carpenter carpenters plan They measure things, right? He's measuring the situation in his mind and he thought about it and he thought about it and he thought about it and when he came to the end of his thought process, I feel like God said to Joseph, now that you've heard your thoughts, Joseph, would you like to hear my thoughts? Now that you've heard your way, would you like to know my way? Because my ways are not your ways. Come on somebody. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts higher than yours. If you always seem with your natural eyes, think with your natural mind, we're going to miss what God is doing in the spirit. So you're looking at life from your perspective. It feels bad. It feels like a failure. And I'm sure that's how Joseph felt. He was sad. He was probably sorrowful. He was confused because this looked like the end of his marriage before it already had begun. And so that's what I'm trying to say. What you think is the end in your life is only the beginning when God gets ready to get involved. I feel like maybe you came with some dead hopes, dead situations, uh, dead dreams. When God gets involved in your life, come on somebody. It's going to become a new beginning. So God said to Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is in her is from me. And I want to share an analogy to help drive what I'm preaching home. I don't know about you if if you do this, but sometimes I like to play with the gifts that I give. I like to play games sometimes with the gifts I give. I like to take a very nice box. And you look at the box, it's shining. Put nice 
beautiful shining wrapping paper over it and you look at the box and it's exciting but you need to know this principle what is on the box is not necessarily what is inside the box you follow me let me say it again what is on the box is not what is inside the box on the box it might say Gucci it might say Prada it might say Satya Paul. For some of you who want homegrown, it might say Potis, Chennai silks. But inside, it could be from Vadavali silks. Some of us are making decisions by what we see. What's on the box is not what is inside the box. See, a lot of young people here. Some of you making decisions about your future partner. But what you see, she looking fine. Oh, he's looking great. It's not what's on the box. It's what's inside the box. Reminded of a story. A man went to a park and he saw the most beautiful girl he had ever seen in his life. Man, she looked incredible. Her hair, whew, just flowed down. He was mesmerized, wow. And she smiled and her teeth sparkled like crystal. He could almost see his face in her teeth. It was like, whew. Her eyes were like diamonds. Man, this guy couldn't get over himself. He said, this is the girl I want to marry. His parents said no. All his friends said, don't do it. No, this is who I'm going to marry. So he marries her. And the first night he's excited, who I got me a tiger. Goes to the room, he's like, wow, she's got beautiful hair. She removes her wig. It's like, well, at least she's got beautiful teeth. She removes her dentures. <laughs> at least she's got beautiful eyes. She removes her plastic eye. What's on the box is not what is inside the box. Some of us make decisions by what we see, by what we feel. Come on. We think, okay, I don't think this marriage is working out. I'll be happier outside the marriage. Or this job is not good. This city is not good. Everything that is shiny is not significant. Got to understand this. And sometimes I like to take a very expensive gift and put it in a very cheap box. Sometimes I feel life does that to us. Sometimes I feel God does that to us. You're looking at the box. You're looking at your situation and you says the box doesn't look good. I felt that's how Joseph felt. God, I'm a faithful man. I deserve a faithful wife. She's pregnant before we even got married. But I felt God was saying to Joseph, Joseph, don't you know that what is inside her is the savior of the world? It's not what's on the box. It's what's inside the box that matters. The package doesn't have to be pretty for the gift to be good. My wife and I, we celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary last week. Yeah, thank you for that enthusiasm. God bless you. But you know, we had an arranged marriage, by the way. Uh, we fell in love after we got married. Just, just want to throw that out for some reason. Okay. But when they asked me, there's this beautiful girl in Uttarakhand, and she's actually in your church in Coimbatore. She's good looking, God fearing, educated, and blah, blah, blah. No. Would you like to marry her? I said no. Can you believe it? And they asked my wife the same question. They asked her, there's this incredibly good looking man, anointed man, powerful preacher. Would you like to marry him? She said no. Can you believe this? To this man? This incredible anointed? I was her pastor. 
Maybe she was afraid I would preach to her every night, you know. Let's open our Bibles now. <laughs> she said no. But do you know, 10 years later, I would tell you, God gave me the most incredible wife that I had. She's amazing. She put up with me for 10 years. Come on. She deserves a better hand clap than that. She's faithful. She's my biggest cheerleader. Incredible. God gave her, if you ask her, she would tell you, God gave her the most amazing, wonderful, best husband in the world right there. The scripture says like this, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Come on somebody. If it's from God, it's a good gift because God is a good giver. Come on, I thought I'd allow to hear an amen than that. I said God is a good giver. Finally. But I want to speak to somebody who's sitting in their disappointment. And you're crushed in your disappointment because life did not go the way you thought it would go. It didn't go the way you envisioned and you're upset with the gift because you don't like how it came to wrap. But I want to tell you, don't miss what God is doing in this season in your life because you didn't like how it came dropped. I feel I would be a fool if I said no to the diamonds because I didn't like the box. It's not what's on the box that's important. It's what's inside the box that's important. Come on, somebody. The box might say pain. Embrace the pain. The box, that season, maybe some of you right now, you're going through a season and the box might say brokenness. It might say betrayal. But I feel it's through these seasons we discover who God is. It's in our brokenness we've, we realize His faithfulness. It's in our hard seasons we discover His tenderness. It's through our impossible situations we discover the power of God that He's the Alpha, He's the Omega, and that nothing is impossible for those who believe Him. It's in these seasons. So I feel like preaching to somebody and say, open the box. Look at somebody next to you. Tell them, open the box. Think inside the box. We always hear think outside the box. This is new revelation right now. Think inside the box. Because Joseph, don't be afraid to take her. What is in her is from me. I feel like some of you, I feel like God wants to tell you that what God is doing in your life right now is more important than what is happening to you right now. It doesn't matter what they did to you, what they didn't do to you. It doesn't matter because in this season, God is working in your life something far more glorious. So Joseph, life didn't go the way you envisioned it. And maybe you're sitting here and things didn't go the way you thought it would go. But I feel God saying, it's from me. It's from me. Working something glorious in your life. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you ready? Who had the harder job, you think? Mary or Joseph? Okay? Now think before you answer this question. Especially if you're married and your wife is sitting next to you, pray about this question before you answer. And are you ready? Who had the harder job? Those of you who say, Mary had the harder job, lift your hands. All right, a few hands going. Can't believe only a few hands are going up. Come on. Mary had the harder job. Lift your hands. Some hands are going up. Some hands are going up. Yeah, Mary. Yeah, I see your hand. Very good. Most of the ladies lifting their hands. Yeah, because they know it's a hard job. Come on. Yeah. Did you lift your hand, my wife? Yeah, of course. Of course, Mary had a hard job, right? She gave birth. Come on, somebody, right? It wasn't like, oh, she's having Jesus. She just sneezed and the baby came out. No, she had to go through it, yeah? In fact, the angel didn't even give Mary a choice. Mary, do you want to have a baby? A or B? A for yes, B for no. Did the angel give her a choice? No. He just said, Mary, you'll have a baby. All right. 
Are you ready now? How many of you say Joseph had the harder job? Lift your hands. My, my. Few hands. My brother is lifting his hand because his wife is not sitting next to him. I just want you to know that, okay? <laughs> I told you, think about it. All right, one more time. Those who say Joseph had the harder job, lift your hands. Okay, many hands going on. Do you know the Bible gives the answer? Bible tells you. Shall we read it? All right, here we go. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. All right, here is Mary's job. She will give birth to a son. And here's Joseph's job. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Mary's job was to give birth. Joseph's job was to give a name. Come on, whose job is harder? Yeah, of course, it seems like Mary's job is harder. When I thought about this, I asked my wife this question. I said, who do you think had the harder job? Man, I shouldn't have even asked that question. She gave me an answer that put the fear of God in me. She said, of course Mary had the harder job. And in those days to have a baby, she sat on a donkey. Joseph didn't even give her a cushion like you didn't give. And you know, when women, they can tell you things about you that you did even before you were born. In all accounts, it feels like Mary had the harder job. But there is something that Joseph did that was very, very hard. Do you know what it was? He had to believe that this baby was really from God. Mary knew. Mary knew this baby was from God because she knew her body. She knew she was a virgin. She knew she hadn't been intimate with any other man. And I'm not going to go more into it because there are some kids here. She knew her body. She knew that this baby was from God. But Joseph didn't know. He had to believe. You know, that's why there's that Christmas carol, Mary, did you know? You sang it this morning. There's no Christmas carol, Joseph, did you know? You know why? He didn't know. <laughs> Mary, did you know? And you sang it very good. Joseph did. He had to believe. And faith is believing what you do not know. It's believing what you cannot see. And Joseph had to have faith because faith doesn't come by sensory knowledge. Come on, somebody. Faith enables to understand that God is with me even when I don't see it. Even when I don't feel it, he is with me. So I felt God saying to Joseph, you need to receive this by faith. In fact, verse 21, we just read it. You'll give him the name Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. Okay. And we're going to go to verse 22. And this is the culmination of what we're talking about. And it says like this, all of this took place, even in your life, okay? All of this took place, everything you understand, everything you don't understand, why? To fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Things happen in your life so that what God has destined for your life can be fulfilled. In fact, if you read that chapter, it's amazing, 42 generations are mentioned there. And God had already decided what he wanted to do 42 generations before. Come on, somebody. And some of those generations lived up to be a thousand years old. Not like his hundred. They were long generations. But God already knew in mind what he wanted to do. Even today, I want to tell you, God had already prepared. He had already foretold. He had already destined, even before you were born, what he wanted to do in your life. So Isaiah prophesies hundreds of years before and he's quoting that scripture here. Verse 23, Isaiah 7, 14. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Come on, can I hear a loud amen? amen? I love this song, Waymaker. And there's a, a bridge in that song that I love very much. And it goes like this, even when I don't see it, 
he is still working. Even when I don't feel it, he is still working. You never stop. You never stop working. I want you to get ready to make a declaration with me. All right? We're going to declare this today. God is with me. All right? We're going to say it together. Are you ready? Say with me. God is with me. I think you can do better than that. All right? Even when I don't see it, he's still with me. Okay? One more time. God is with me. I feel one more time. Three times a charm, right? One for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's go, all right? Let's declare it loud. Are you ready? One, two, three. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to work with our imaginations today. I want you to think that this is the screen. See that screen right there? Think this is the screen, okay? Can you imagine with me? This is the screen. Now, imagine I'm on the screen. Am I on the screen? Can you see me? Have you seen a good-looking pastor like this? No is the answer, right? <laughs> so this is the screen. <laughs> All right, this is what happens, okay? I want you to watch me, right? Work with me here, right? This is the screen. Can you see me? Because what happens sometimes is God steps outside the screen. And if you go, but, so you'll keep looking here. This is the screen. Don't look at me. Screen. Right? Look at the screen. Because what does God do? He steps outside the screen. And some of you are looking at me. You're disobedient like your pastor. Screen. Screen. <laughs> God steps outside the screen. And then you think, where did God go? What's happening in my life? And you were only looking with your eyes. You would think that the person who is speaking has left the building. But the way to know that I'm still here and speaking is to not go by what you see, but by what you hear. Because faith comes by hearing. Come on, somebody. So if you know my voice, Jesus said, you will know that I never leave you, not that I ever forsake you. Come on. He is our Emmanuel. He is God with us. So even when I see him, even when I don't see him, he is still with me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because even when I can't see him with my natural eyes, I know with my spiritual eyes, he is with me. He is with me on my good day. He is with me on my bad day. He is with me when I'm happy and I'm fulfilled. And he is with me when I'm broken and I'm weeping. He is with me when the sun's shining. And he is with me when I'm going through a storm. Because he never leaves me nor forsakes me. He is with me when I have a job. He's with me when I don't know how I'm going to make a payment. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm preaching? He is Emmanuel. He is with me. If you believe it, come on. Give the Lord a good hand clap right now. Give him a 10 second praise like you believe it. Come on. Lift it up. Come on. Lift it up. One more time. Come on. He's with me. Come on. He's with me. He's with me. He's with me when I'm single. He's with me when I'm married. He's with me when my spouse is with me. He's with me when everybody's left me. Because he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He, he, he's with me when I'm healthy. He's with me when I'm sick. So even though life might not be what you envision, he is with you. And because he's with you, what God has spoken, he will fulfill in your life. If you believe it, come on, give the Lord a good hand clap one more time. So we asked Joseph, Joseph, did you know? He would say, no. I believed. I believed God's word. I made up my mind. God had something else in his mind. I trusted what God had more than my situation. And that was the best decision I did. Today, that's the word of the Lord for us. Believe. In your situation, believe. God's word says, only believe. All things are possible to those who believe. 
Sometimes if we get, if we get too tightly zoomed in one situation at one moment, we miss the bigger picture of what God is doing in our lives. That's what I want to tell you. God knows what he's doing in your life. God knows where he put you in this season. God knows what he put inside of you in this season. Can I hear an amen? I want to finish now and I, I want to pray, especially for people here today who would say, you know what? My life is not what I had envisioned. I'm not where I thought I was supposed to be. Maybe in your mind you had an idea. I thought by this time, supposed to be here and you're here and you're saying you know what things didn't go the way I'd imagine and I want to pray for you before I pray I want to just tell you three things today very quickly because when I started I told you we need to understand how Jesus came so we understand why Jesus came and I want to give you three quick words hopefully you will remember it this week and the first word that I want to give you is insignificant. Jesus came through somebody who was insignificant. Who everybody else thought was nobody. Was insignificant. But Jesus chose her. In fact, Jesus didn't come through royalty. He came through an ordinary girl who was so scared when the angel told her. She said, how could this be? God came for people who are insignificant. Can I hear an amen? Sometimes we, we get excited when an actor or an actress or a politician or somebody like that gets saved. But Jesus Christ is born in the hearts of every person who receives him by faith. And God is not a respecter of persons. In fact, the Bible says heaven rejoices even when one sinner gets saved. There is nobody ordinary for God. I want that to get into you today. And in fact, God has a plan and a purpose for everybody sitting here today. No matter who you are. You might be a student. You might be a teacher. You might be a, a business person. You might even look at yourself and say, I'm ordinary. But my God specializes in taking ordinary people and doing extraordinary things. That I like hear a louder amen, but move to the next word. The second word is impossible. Can you say with me, impossible? Come on, shout it out, impossible. impossible. Jesus came through a virgin, which was impossible. Because he wanted you to know that impossible situations are the best fertile grounds for God to work in. Impossible situations, when you believe him, turn into miraculous situations. Maybe you came with an impossible situation today. And I want to tell you that you are in the right place because we serve a God of the impossible. But I love the third word the most. Okay? And the third word is intimate. Jesus came to be intimate with you and me. I love how the book of Hebrews says, he says, he came to be like us. He walked where I walked. He went through every pain that you and I go through so that we can have a high priest who sympathizes with us. My daughter, she taught me something very powerful. She looks at me and she says, Daddy, I want you to understand what I'm going through. It's not enough that I solve her problems. She wants me to understand her problem first and then give the solution. That's what Jesus does. He understands. We don't have a God when you go to him, he just fixes your problems. We have a God who says, yes, I understand what you went through. He walked where I walked. He's intimate with me. He knows my pain. That's the kind of high priest we have. He came for us. Can I hear an amen? I want to tell one story. Is that okay? 
a husband and wife. They had children. They had a huge fight. In fact, such a terrible fight. The wife packed her bags and said, I'm leaving. She left. And the husband was devastated, left with his kids at home. His wife had gone. He wrote her letter after letter. Come back. Come home. No response. He sent her text message. He sent her WhatsApp messages. No response. One day, he decided enough is enough. He went to where his wife was staying. It was a small, dingy room. And he stood outside her door and there was a little window and he peeped inside. There she was, sitting on the floor, tears everywhere. She was dirty, stinky, alcohol bottles thrown all over, sitting and weeping. He knocked on the door. She opened. And he looked at her and he said, Honey, let's go home. And she said, Yes. And she followed him home. When they got home, he asked her, He said, All this time, I sent you letter after letter, message after message, but you didn't even respond one time when I came and I said come why did you come she looked at him and she said all this time you only sent me letters but today you came in person and that's what Jesus did for you and for me (laughs) he came in person for us he wrote letter after letter (laughs) In the Old Testament but we didn't respond and he did what that man did he came in person and he knocked and he said I've come in person because I love you can I hear an amen this morning shall we stand up to our feet and if you want to give a hand clap come on give a good hand clap to the Lord we want to pray for you shall we lift our hands towards heaven today and just tell him Lord thank you for coming Come on, open your mouth. Tell them, Lord, thank you for coming. Come on, come on, come on. You can do this. You can do this. I tell you, you're going to feel a lot better when you say it. Come on, say, Lord. Come on, one more time. Lord, thank you for coming. Come on, just begin to pray right now in your own words, in your own mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He came for you, church. Come on, come on, come on. Don't be silent today. If you don't know what to pray, just tell them, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Come on, come on. Press in with me, church. Press in with me today. I believe there's something that God wants to do here today. Come on. Don't be silent. Press in with me today. I want to pray for you, and then I'm going to invite your pastor. He's going to come and give you an altar call today. But I want you to pray with me today. Come on, come on. Don't be silent today. Open your mouths. Come on. We bless your name today, Jesus. We bless your name today, God. Maybe you came here today and, and you're saying, Yes, Pastor, life is not what I had envisioned. But He is with you today. And like that song I said, He's the way maker today. Come on. He's the miracle worker today, church. He's a promise keeper today. And what God has spoken in your life, He will bring it to pass. Kurabata. I worship you. Yes. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Yes, Lord. Moving in our day. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. 
situations with our good with our bad with our broken with our perfect no matter what is going on we come to you in faith because you are our way maker you are our miracle worker you are our promise keeper lord i thank you that there is nothing impossible for you to do in our lives even today we thank you that chains are being broken bondages are being broken weapons of the enemies are being destroyed today we thank you today that no weapon formed against us shall prosper because you are with us you surrounded us you're in our front you're in our back you're in our side you go before us you make ways for us you thwart the weapons of the enemy we thank you God that when we come to you in faith you do the impossible for us that when we look to you when we call upon you you are a God who answers us Lord you answer us in time of need even today we lift our eyes up to you because your word says those who look to him will never be ashamed come on they will become radiant like the sun God we thank you that your word is true come on church clap your hands receive it this morning we thank you Lord that your word is true we thank you that you're not a man that you should lie we thank you every word you've spoken will come to pass and even before we were born lord you've already spoken words over our life even right now my situation might not look good i thank you that you're working still in my life something far more glorious lord hallelujah jesus I pray today, even if there's anybody today with a situation in their life, God, that you will intervene in their life. If there's somebody today, like Joseph, interrupt their lives, God, so that your plan and your purpose can be fulfilled in their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you believe it, give the Lord a good hand clap this morning. Hallelujah.